Welcome to the energy revolution turning world politics on its head. This is Williston, North Dakota. In the middle of the prairie, it's less than 130 kilometers from the border with Canada. Until seven years ago, this was a sleepy town in the middle of nowhere with 12,000 inhabitants. Now, there are three times as many people here. Yo. Hello. Hey, how are you Hello, doing? sir. Welcome. I'm Walter, nice to meet you. Yeah, pleasure to have you. You're in charge yeah. of the only uh, recession-free town in the United States, right? Yeah, I'm afraid so. No uh, recession here. Hopefully we can help turn the rest of the country around. Yeah. Is it true, so, zero unemployment almost? Like 0.3. Like hardly nothing. It's, yeah. It's, um, actually it's harder to find housing than it is to find a job. Here. Yeah. Williston is in the middle of a region 15 times larger than the Netherlands. And in the deep subsurface of the area, in the shale rock, are colossal gas and oil reserves. The method for extracting it from the ground was only recently discovered. And since then, Williston has become a new frontier, fueling a gas and oil fever. A boomtown in the truest sense of the word. Tom Rolf is the city's main economic developer. His family, descended from Norwegian immigrants, has lived in this town for four generations. Rolf is something of a local celebrity. If I could get you driving a truck, uh, you could probably make 100,000 a year. Just as a truck driver? Yeah. Oh, I got a lot, need a lot of trucks. So why would I want to work at McDonald's if I can make $100,000? That's the problem. McDonald's no. can't find anything, can't find the work. Yeah, well, they got to work hard for it. They got to okay. pay a little more. All right, let's go. The gas fields of North Dakota have proven so rich that the price of natural gas in the U.S. has decreased by as much as 70% in recent years. And that's before the construction of the pipelines needed to deliver the gas is even complete. In Europe, it's natural gas that comes out of the ground. Here, it seems to be a lot of oil. What do you do with the gas? Um, initially, when we drill the well, we, we will flare it. But as we, start, as we start drilling methodically down the country road, we're gonna pipe it all. And it's all gonna have to go to a gas plant. And what that plant is there for is not just to get the natural gas, but the beauty of our natural gas is it's heavy in natural gas liquids. Thanks to the shale revolution, America is now completely gas independent. In the future, by condensing the gas into liquid, it will be readily exported, even across oceans. Trucks, 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 trucks. But for now, the gas released here is just a byproduct of oil extraction and is burned to reduce the environmental impact. Recent satellite photos show that at night this remote region shines even brighter than New York City. So this is very typical. But how exactly does this revolutionary drilling technique work? In the old days, you wanted to drill down two miles, go through a layer, 100 feet thick, and then you perforate it around that well. Yeah. Today what we do is we go down two miles and then we angle into that layer and we vertically. follow it for two miles. So you first go down vertically and then horizontally you just... Right, and, and then then once it... we've drilled that, then we'll actually go in there and blast holes incrementally, sideways, and then we'll under, under high pressure pump water and sand in a gel-like liquid, trying to fracture the rock, because it's really dense rock, like a tombstone rock or a marble, uh, but it's shale. So you fracture the rock with pressure, but then you try to get sand into those cracks because sand's got porosity. And so that oil will leak out of the shale into the sand, back to the pipe, just like the roots of a tree bring water back up the trunk. And it solves the energy problem for the United States? Big, big, for a long time. No Middle Eastern oil necessary anymore. Exactly. So and it's, it's such a nice quality oil. That changes the world politics. Very much so. And economics. Who would have thought, you know, North Dakota. Yeah. Changing the world. Exactly. It's a, it's a revolution.
It is an absolute revolution. It's an absolute revolution. It has enormous consequences. This is a game changer, a major shift in American politics and economics, with major geopolitical consequences. A superpower wants to be independent in the field of oil and gas. If you are independent in that area, then you do not need to worry about all those countries where that stuff comes from, which are often unstable countries, because we know that many conflicts are fed by energy and raw materials. That's an enormous conflict, and you don't need to worry about that. These conflicts can be left to others, to Europe, for example, and your own country itself can focus more on the challenges for its own interest, like China. Rob de Wijk is the Netherlands expert on international relations. René Peters of TNO is one of its greatest gas experts. Basically, shale gas is the same as natural gas. It is only in a more difficult layer. Where is shale gas to be found worldwide? Traditionally, most of the gas is in Russia and the Middle East, in countries such as Qatar and Iran. Shale gas is much more widespread over the world, in a number of countries in large quantities, in Argentina, Brazil, South Africa, but also, for example, in China and Australia. In America, Boomtown Williston is not holding back. There is a shortage of labor and a huge shortage of housing. Men come from all over to work in the shale industry and are placed in so-called man camps container homes. Others live in campers in parking lots. Cost $1,100 per month for a place in the mud. People wanted to park these on any street in town and in somebody's backyard and next to a business and so forth. And, and uh, we want to have an orderly community. So these are people from all over the United States? Yes. We have a saying here that, you know, if when you're leaving Walmart and you want to find your car, you look for the North Dakota plate, because there's fewer of them than there are from every other state. It's full-blown shale fever. A patch of soil that until recently cost a few dollars is now worth hundreds of thousands. House prices in this remote town now rival the ones you'd find in central New York. A one-bedroom apartment costs $3,000 per month, unaffordable for most. There's 500 people here. 500 people in this spot. We shouldn't have to suffer. We shouldn't have to suffer when the government is making trillions of dollars. But the city is building uh, yeah. apartment, you bet. At $3,000 a shot. Well, it, you're, it's going to be supply and demand. I mean, and, no, and, and tell you don't you, rip people off. Well, people do. There's no one building here. There's no one making it so we can have homes. We're iced up, our water freezes. Yeah. We have children, I have a little one. We're iced up all the time, our, our pipes break. Yeah. We're cold, yeah. we're tired of it. We've been doing it for three years. Her point is we're, you know, we're making the trillions of dollars. But, but she's they... here to make the money and she said she makes big money, but she still calls it hell on earth. Well, if she, you know, if she wanted to go to heaven, she should have stayed where she was, I guess. You know, but she wasn't making any money. It's a slightly less attractive side of the American dream. So far, it's mostly men who come to Williston. They work 12 hours on, 12 hours off, 14 days in a row. Truck drivers earn $100,000 a year here. Managers like Todd Farley, at least 400 to 500,000. You gotta stop and figure, we, we're away from our families. I'm a thousand miles away from home. I come up, this customer that I'm working for now, you know, they tell me I'd work two weeks on and two weeks off. It's, it's two months, and I work seven days a week. My average day is an 18-hour day. Well, it's time to, for you to start enjoying your money then, eh? Yeah, well, I've got plenty of toys. <laughs> Waitresses in cafes and diners easily pocket tips of $800 a day. Strippers and lap dancers are flown in from Las Vegas. They earn at least two to three thousand dollars per night.
In red, you see oil, in blue the gas. The dark color is unconventional, let's say the shale oil and gas. So you see where America had merely a decreasing oil and gas production in the recent decades, and that they have an increase again in both oil and gas production in the last decade. This is mainly due to the unconventional oil and gas, shale oil and gas, which is booming at the moment. One of the consequences of the shale revolution and low prices of cleaner gas is that the USA barely uses any coal anymore. It follows, for example, in the United States, that because of the low gas prices, coal in America is expensive and is exported to Europe to be exploited here. In the main power stations, yes. As a result, here the main power plants for gas are shut and electricity is largely generated by coal. So the Americans dump their redundant coal here, and there are more European coal plants while gas plants shut. That means that CO2 emissions increase in Europe while it decreases in America. That is a peculiar development. Yes, that means that a country like America, which has never signed Kyoto, realizes a reduction of CO2 emissions, while Europe, with its strong drive to realize CO2 emissions targets, achieves the opposite. The shale gas revolution in America is compromising the greening of energy in Europe. Since the gas deposits became exploitable, American coal exports to Europe have increased fivefold. The question is, what do the environmental lobby think of this revolution? Greenpeace doesn't believe that shale gas is the solution. Shale gas leads to great problems for the environment anyway. It is still a fossil fuel. Furthermore, methane leaks are released when shale gas is obtained by drilling. Besides that, we do not need this fuel. In the 60s, man poked holes in the crust of the earth in a number of inconsiderable places. The result was amazing. Powerful rays of energy spurted up, natural gas. And when it was measured, the stock in the soil was as breathtaking as to be so great that nobody in the country dared to mention the figure. Natural gas is a flame that leads to a new period of comfort and prosperity. It was the largest natural gas field in Europe. At times, almost 20% of all government revenue in the Netherlands came from natural gas. It essentially funded the formation of the Dutch welfare state. Fast forward 40 years, and those state revenues have begun to fall. The Groningen gas field is now two-thirds empty. And in about 10 years, the Netherlands will not be able to meet its gas needs, depending on gas-exporting countries like Russia. After 60 years, it must pay for gas, instead of earning from it. The extraction of shale gas could postpone this for years. The first thing we fear is massive climate change. Methane comes up with shale gas. It's a greenhouse gas 25 times worse than ordinary CO2. Then there is another huge problem. The question of clean water. One needs clean water in order to inject the chemicals for fracking. That dirt comes up with benzene, arsenic, which our crops absorb. Then we'll get sick. If you want to develop shale gas in Europe, you may not catch the production water with chemicals and gases in open basins. It should be in closed basins. So the risk of leaking chemicals and methane evaporating in the open air cannot occur in Europe because of the strict environmental legislation. If you don't try something, how will you know that it doesn't work? Well, we're listening to the environmentalists. <laughs> yeah. We should? I, 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 I deal with them. I have dealt with them in the past. And they, it's like talking to a rock on the ground. 
they get something in their head and they they put blinders on they don't want to listen they don't want to listen they don't want to try nothing they say oh my gosh look at what they did well learn from learn from other people's mistakes but don't stop going forward i mean that's that's part of life everybody you you stumble you fall you're gonna quit walking back in the u.s it's full steam ahead once a month there is a job market in williston which is always packed sir can i ask where you're from california california i'm um, looking for a job obviously and i know they're here because i was here last year and i worked rolled into town three days later i was working today i'm looking to beat that record on a job today so how many percent of the people that are here right now will walk out with a job offer today boy it's hard to know uh but i would say uh you know we need we probably need to hire everybody that's walked in the door so if we can that's find them the right guaranteed. job pretty much yeah that you'll find probably them. biggest issue is where they're gonna live so did you guys get lucky well yeah i think we did we uh, got lucky with this one company and they gave us uh what they call a um, letter of promise a hiring letter so uh, now we just basically wait to see when they call us in to take a drug test and where are you from uh, we're from Florida, actually. Yeah. Florida, it's, it's what are you doing here in the cult? We're trying to get gainfully employed. Since the housing market <laughs> took a downside, um, we're trying to do what it takes to survive right about now. Gas is now so cheap that U.S. companies have stopped producing in low-wage countries, such as Mexico and China. The low energy prices make it more attractive to produce back home. We already know that a lot of wealth will come to the United States because it actually becomes a sort of energy paradise. We know that almost $100 billion in economic activity is created. It is definitely a Viagra for the economy, with enormous consequences. It's undermining the competitiveness of large European companies. Recently, the bosses of companies like Axo, Noble, DSM, BASF, Shell, and Dow Chemical have not dismissed moving to America for lower energy prices. They say that nowadays the price differences between America and Europe are so big that it is difficult to make more profitable investments in chemistry in Europe. In any case, the companies will not choose Europe for new investments, as in the long run, the gas price is not expected to decrease any time soon. Because America no longer requires the Middle East and North Africa for gas and oil, the problems there are shifted onto Europe, because Europe is still dependent on those areas for energy. This is about our future energy utilities. This is about how we can keep up the economy in our country, for now and for the future. This is about the safety of Europe in connection with what is happening in the Middle East and North Africa. There is a direct relationship. It is a very complex problem that for once has to be addressed integrally. If you don't do that, you lose. So we're on our own. And at the same time, you see that European forces are phasing out. This is what many politicians absolutely don't realize. And that this is going on at this moment with enormous implications for the security of Europe. Whatever conclusions the public debate reaches, it's clear that the shale gas revolution is well and truly underway. And it seems the global politics of energy provision have changed forever. <laughs>